All right, we're back, and today we've got a combination video. Many gadgets to go through. One, two, three, four, five. Five cool gadgets. Hopefully they're cool. Well, I mean, we're going to find out. That's kind of the point of the show. So let's kick it off with the headline. Goldish, gold-looking AirPods alternatives. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, I have featured so many different AirPods alternatives including other devices from this company, Happy Plugs. They're taking a very fashion, a fashion-ish approach to the idea of an AirPods alternative. And this is, well, that's some next level stuff. They, they look like real gold. They are not real gold, but they look like real gold so that you can, well, you could be flashy in front of your pals, uh, whatever it is you have to do. I'm not gonna judge you, but uh, this is a limited edition for them. If you head over to their website, they have many different colors available, but weirdly, a lot of them are on pre-order. They have the Air One, Air One Plus, Air One Go, which is a smaller version of it. And then they've got a new in-ear style, which is, I guess, their Pro model, Pro version. You know, you won't be able to pick up this one because it is limited edition. If you look on the back here, limited to 250 pieces. I don't know, maybe you could spam them and try to get them to make it again, but this evaluation will apply to the variety of products they have if you can find a color that you like. And I think that's really their claim to fame at the moment is a tremendous number of colors to choose from. Pink and, and marble and white and pink gold, black. They say high quality audio, silicone sleeves, 14 hours of battery, supports iOS and Android, sweat resistant, Bluetooth 5.0, dual microphones and touch commands. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, in the past, I've had a hard time finding an AirPods alternative that I like that is in the exact same design style as AirPods. I mean, I did a video going over all the different alternatives. You should definitely go check it out. There's a product from these guys in that video as well, as many others, and so far, the best alternatives I've found don't try to mimic AirPods in their shape and style but instead just go for something different, go for an in-ear style and something like that. But but it's understandable that people want something slim and trim and slender like this little gold one. Actually, this finish looks really nice. It's gonna attract a tremendous number of fingerprints, that's for certain. But this, it looks like a gold-plated earbud in line with that viral video where that jeweler who I mentioned in the past did an actual gold-plated version of these, but these these look pretty good, actually. So those are the earbuds. This is the case. And this is super lightweight plastic, by the way. Uh, look at the fingerprints already. Uh, not that I'm surprised it's a mirror finish, but my goodness, that's gonna look good for about five minutes and then never again afterwards. It actually wants you to charge the earbuds before using them for 15 minutes. It's a budget product. You kind of come to expect it every so often, but I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest. I'm a little sick of anything that's micro USB at this point in 2020. But anyway, that's what's in the pack. These little ear tips can go on the outside, I suppose, for a, a fit improvement for some users. There's also a sticker inside, little user manual. This marketplace has absolutely blown up. These companies that have popped up seemingly overnight happy plugs one of them at least in the case of happy plugs it looks like they've got a robust website where you can actually buy these things although the fact that they're all on pre-order is a bit bothering let me try what if i select a different style what if i go to wireless 2 what is that okay i can add that to cart so maybe they just it's a lot of demand and they're sold out or on pre-order. Not sold out, on pre-order. I don't know, That's just keep that in mind. If you head to their site, it's a lot of pre-order for the time being. So the way these things are gonna charge up, there's two little contact points on the inside. Oh, magnets. Actually, that's pretty nice. Gets in there uh, real easy. Magnets jump down on it. Ooh, I also just noticed on the back, the limited edition indicator there, 224 of 250, but the fingerprints are madness on this. My goodness. What did it say? I think it said battery low. Battery low, it wants to charge more. I guess their little paperwork wasn't lying. They wanted to charge for 15 minutes. So let's let this charge for a moment. We'll come back to that, give it a little test. In the meantime, how about we jump into product number two? So 
This thing is called hybrid drive, which is actually a bit confusing because I did a quick Google on the word hybrid drive. It's something people have been using for a long period of time as a generic term. I had to actually look for the website on the back. It is gethybriddrive.com, which then brings you to a Kickstarter page, a Kickstarter looking page, Indiegogo, pre-order for 50% off. Uh, this is kind of cool. A lot of people look for expansion on their laptop and this one takes it a step further. It's not just a dock. Instead, it also gives you an option to expand your storage through a fast M.2 SSD that you can put inside of this enclosure. It's gonna connect via USB type C and then give you an SD card slot, a micro SD card slot, two USB A ports, and a full size HDMI out to connect to an external monitor. Storage up to two terabytes. That's just the max size that you're probably gonna find currently for an M.2. Up to 450 megabytes per second read and write speed and 4K up to 60 Hertz over the HDMI connector. For an early unit, it feels pretty, st uh, pretty sturdy. What, why does that, is that supposed to come off? So this is like a, this is just a cap. Oh, never mind. So this is a cap and a cable. You can connect to any device you like with this type C cable, which pops out of the unit. You take your device, you plug into the type C port, and then you open up all of the potential expansion and the internal M.2 storage. This is not an enclosure. It looks like it's got storage. It does. It's got a Kingston two terabyte in it. Remove this cap and then plug it directly into a laptop or I guess some other, I mean, here's an iPad. I wonder what would happen here. Why couldn't you do this too? More importantly, if you have one of these guys, a laptop with a type C port on it, then you're gonna be able to do this like that and have that sit on the side without the need for a cable, it makes me a little worried sitting there on the single type C connector that if it gets banged, it's a desk only. I don't think you're gonna wanna put it on your lap. If it's on a desk, you're gonna feel okay about it. Cause it's a Kickstarter. There you go, all right, we connect all the things. We slap the cap on. There, Android, yeah, you connect it to a smartphone. They show an iPad. It's cool. I kind of wish that the construction was a little bit more robust. It comes in four different configurations. My goodness, they raised 700,000 Canadian dollars. 316 bucks with two terabytes of storage. Okay, all right. Starting price, 128 storage is 79. Oh, let's check in on those earbuds now. Power on Air One pairing. Connected? Connected to what? I didn't even... Did I? Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Uh, it's a it's a mediocre type of. It's also is this thing. This thing is already scratching up and getting scratched. The plastic. I don't. Uh. It's not the worst headset ever. If you want to listen to a podcast or you're not very discerning. You're gonna get the job done. But there are better options out there for that price. <laughs> Look, man, you just need some golden buds and I'm not I'm not judging you. Hopefully they can upgrade the next version. All right, next up, we have this odd package that arrived. Unusual looking contraption in there. <laughs> a little bit of paperwork. Like this is a steel certificate of authenticity. Geometrically correct design is supplemented with mathematically perfect internal mechanics. Serial number 85. Not many of these out there in the world. It is a specialty blade, futuristic cyberpunk style of blade for big dreamers with 40 features, compact, personal, ninja tool tech wear, metropolis traveler outfit. <laughs> this thing's expensive, $150 knife, but it does look quite cool. Do I swing it or what do I do here? That guy just, that guy in the video just chucks it down a bit. No, no way. Is he doing a trick this way? Like that. It does look cool. And what's interesting is the blade is sharp all the way around. Sharpened up top and bottom. Then to put it away, 
What do we do? Push the... Oh, okay. To put it away, you just push up that little piece there. It's definitely cool looking. Everything's been coming to the house recently, so my garage is, is like some sort of shipping and receiving zone. So I could definitely make use of this in there. So this guy just pulling it out how I was. Somehow they have Unbox Therapy on here and I don't, I haven't even looked at this thing yet. That was wishful thinking, I suppose, when they sent it to me that it would show up on the show. Well, it's shown up on the show. Humanity is moving into the era of cyberpunk. Mm. The mask Cybertruck does not seem ridiculous. This dude, he's the rebellion. Check him out. Oh, bottle opener. Bottle opener. So Where? I've crafted a pocket knife for creative yeah. people. And for those who don't really- It's kind of cool. Couple different functions. You get the idea. He's very happy with it. They're very happy with it. All the way from the Ukraine. Inertix Cyberpunk the situation in the world is Pocket Exo Blade. You guys know, uh, recently I've been covering these types of products on the channel, particularly because all that new Microsoft Surface stuff came out, including the Surface Go and the keyboard that comes with that or as an accessory to that. And I was complaining about the Apple alternative on their inexpensive iPad. Of course, they upgraded the keyboard for the iPad Pro. The Magic Keyboard is their new one. I don't have it yet. It should be here very soon. So this is kind of a cool in-between. It's the Combo Touch from Logitech for that seventh generation affordable iPad. That's the iPad that's just over 300 bucks. You add this case and you essentially get what Apple really should have made in the first place, which is a tactile feedback keyboard case for the cheaper iPad. This is 150 bucks, so. The whole thing is not all that inexpensive at that point, but it's still a lot cheaper than an iPad Pro setup. This guy, what is he doing? He's browsing and reading. He's watching movies because it's also a stand, doing some drawing. Backlit keyboard as well. So there is the keyboard and it has a nice, oh, it's a nice fabric feel to it. And those have an actual, that's an actual click, ladies and gentlemen, on the combo touch. And this is the other portion that will actually go around the iPad and protect it. That's the other thing. It's a lot more protective than what Apple is selling. So just to recap, you might not realize this when you go to purchase it. This is actually the keyboard case that Apple sells for the inexpensive iPad. And you can tell right away, these keys with this uh, nylon synthetic covering, this is not a satisfying experience. As a case, it's just covering the front of the iPad. I'll show you what I'm talking about here real quick. Closed like this, and it has a strange part of the way bulge, and then the back of the iPad is completely exposed. And then also when you go to crack it open, it's a multi-step process. There was an opening for Logitech to make something like this. Now, as a quick comparison, up until this product came, you had products like, like the Microsoft Surface Go, which had keyboards like this. And this is more comparable to what Logitech has offered up. It's, well, it's almost identical, to be honest. Connects up here, tactile buttons, trackpad below, and this one has Alcantara. This is the more expensive cover. Ooh, you know what? I may give I may give this one to the Logitech. It's a, it's actually hard to say. This one is spread out a little bit more. You can see the special keys up along top are a bit larger than what Microsoft gives you on the Surface Go. We slam it into here like this and then we pop it onto there. I think we just made the Apple iPad Go. This is now this is the competition for the Microsoft Surface Go in reality, because you have the inexpensive iPad, you're around 500 bucks total, you have the trackpad, you have the keyboard, and you even have the kickstand plus full coverage on the protection. Now, you have this loop on the top for the pen. I have to say that's a fairly polished package. Now the angles, look at the angle availability as well. You can go basically flat or sort of a 90 degree laptop style of angle as well. Now the other benefit here, you can just pop the keyboard off and now you have a case kickstand. Oh, I think Logitech actually nailed it here. I think Logitech has actually outthought Apple on this one. Now, I haven't tried the Magic Keyboard to be clear, but compared to the other ones that I've tried, this is the most robust accessory or version of a laptop replacement iPad setup 
that I've had here on the show. You have controls for the backlight on the keyboard itself, multimedia keys and volume controls at your disposal. So yeah, it's a keyboard, it's connected. There's full trackpad support on the latest software version. Of course, at any point you can reach up and touch the display as well. It's sturdier than I expected. Just that little kickstand when you kind of tap or have to touch the display. Your multimedia keys work as expected. Brightness works as expected. The quick brown. This is a billion times better than the keyboard case you can get for this iPad from Apple. So definitely look in this direction. It's a bit pricey at 150, but that's what you come to expect with iPad accessories. Look at that nice little package. Does make it heavier, does make it fatter but you're around 500 bucks for the package. And I really like the fact that they didn't make it a whole solid thing. So if you don't need the keyboard, you just leave that part. And now you have a case for your iPad and a kickstand. You can prop it up for video conferencing, video watching. This one is called Powered and it's a multi-device wireless charger. Man, we've seen so many of these types of things emerge recently. This is a 25 watt charge dock. They say it could be up to two times faster than what? I guess other wireless chargers. Overheat protection and fast charging for Apple and Samsung phones, and I presume others as well. They probably just targeted those ones because they're popular. Qi certified, no scratch surface. You can see the way they have it set up here. They have some AirPods, a phone, and an Apple Watch. Presumably you could do two phones? We'll test it out. We'll see if that's possible. Oh. Nice little unboxing experience so far. Look at this, the shape of that box. So in here we have a power brick. That's a hefty power brick right there, but it would have to be to deliver the 25 watts this is capable of. This one lets you prop up your phone in this kind of position, which is nice for the bedside table to just have it standing upright. And then it lets you charge a secondary device on the flat section. Kind of rubberized feel to it. Soft touch though, so you're not gonna feel nervous about your device sitting on there. You pop your phone on. This one has a case on it, but a very thin case obviously. And boom, you're charging up, no problem. Now if you take some AirPods for example, you drop them down on this section and those are charging. Now in the case of the OnePlus, there's no warp charge here. It's just your typical slightly upgraded wireless charging. And then lastly, if you take the Apple Watch and you pop it on the far side over here, there we go. We got the indicator on that one as well. I don't know about having the watch all the way up here. It's a bit strange. This is also using a third party watch band, which is a bit heavier. So it kind of wants to droop a little bit, but it's definitely convenient to have the singular charger, whether it's on the bedside table, in the living room, wherever you keep it, that can, house your devices when they're not in use and keep them charged. Now, if we remove the AirPods and instead replace it with another phone, let's see what happens there. So that one's charging up. That's the S20 Ultra. This one is still charging as well. And you have the watch, which is still getting power also. So that's two phones and a watch. So I think this is gonna be a popular choice for people looking for an all-in-one charger, maybe in the kitchen, on the bedside table, like I said, Probably the main drawback is gonna be price. It's 129 bucks. It comes in white and black and it'll send up to 10 watts of wireless power, which is supported by a number of different devices. So that is faster than a lot of wireless chargers that are out there. And of course you have the Logitech brand name, which maybe will make you a bit comfier than buying some charger from a brand that's new to the space or that you haven't heard of before. A few different products in this video. We have the multiple wireless charger, we have the Combo Touch keyboard case, also from Logitech. We had the golden fingerprint magnet, the sorta unusual cyberpunk unboxing knife, and the hyperdrive SSD slash port expander for your laptop or mobile device. Let me know down in the comments which of these gadgets you would go for if you could pick one, and also check the description for links to all the stuff that was talked about in this video.